would see ourselves. I mean, on the on the question of David Cameron, did you did you see his appointment partly as a sort of as a sop to people like you? Did you see that as a sort of internally facing gesture as much as a let's have a foreign secretary with a bloody good address book? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think I, I would have seen it as a as a, a bid to appeal to one part of the party. I think the prime minister genuinely sees him as someone who is bringing a set of unique qualities, um, and, and uh, it's no secret that lots of people have mixed feelings about anyone holding those sorts of offices from the House of Lords and there are, the, the, the House of Commons is wrestling with how to make sure he is able to uh, undergo the kind of scrutiny that, uh, that I think is legitimate. Uh, but I think a lot of us are very glad to see David back on the front line of politics. You can pass on this one, but is he in the WhatsApp group? <laughs> no, he isn't. Oh, okay. Uh, just on immigration, actually, I genuinely don't know this. So you say there's a degree of unity in the Conservative Party on dealing, presumably with the small boats, the sort of irregular. But when it comes to legal immigration, there are, I mean, you know, I remember Liz Truss as Prime Minister hinting that she wanted to liberalise things yet further. I mean, is there a, are the One Nation group relatively comfortable with where regular immigration is at the moment? Is there a concern about the number? I mean, do you have a... So I, th I think there's a broad consensus across the party, wherever, wherever you sit, that those numbers of both legal and illegal migration are, are very high mm -hmm. and don't have broad public consent, if, if that makes sense. And I, I'm, I'm, mine is a constituency where immigration has always been a huge issue um, since the uh, liberalisation of, of uh, EU immigration rules and we saw huge yeah. expansion uh, in, in places like Boston where agricultural work was this magnet mm. um, and there were no transitional controls. So, so I, on, a, on a personal level I'm acutely aware uh, of the strains that that puts um, to some extent on public services but, mm -hmm. but it's also a, a mixed bag. I, I'm conscious that on the one hand my local GPs are under a lot of pressure because of immigration, on the other hand the maternity unit is still open because of immigration so uh, it, it is swings and roundabouts. On the other hand the challenge comes around public consent. The, the, the mm -hmm. challenge comes around uh, saying to people for instance in an area like mine you've seen huge change over a very short period of time do you feel like anyone ever had that conversation with you? And certainly in a place like Boston, the answer is simply no. Uh, and under the new system, I mean, one of the things I always figured about the new system was the numbers might be high, but the geography would be different. That's to say, people coming in, earning over the salary cap, having a job. In, in your constituency, have numbers come down, or is it far less obvious that immigration is as much an issue as it was under freedom of movement when you got those agricultural workers? So, relatively, yes, um, numbers have come down, uh, but that's largely because these are largely seasonal agricultural workers, there is a seasonal agricultural scheme, the countries that we used to uh, take those people from now themselves have seasonal worker schemes to try and right. uh, attract people. So, so it is, it's much more nuanced than simply being a Brexit.